All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior support engineer and subject matter expert over here at Inflow Communications. I'll be taking you through our webinar today on event filters. I do have six years of unified communications experience um, working on the MyTel platforms as well as PeerCloud and RingCentral. A few webinars coming up before we get started here, just so you know what we have coming down the pipe at Inflow. Um, on the 15th, we are doing a webinar on the Shortel 14.2 to connect migration and what to expect. So if you're still using the 14.2 platform um, and are getting ready to move to the, the newer Connect platform, this will go over what to expect, the differences, um, and how to prepare best for that situation and that upcoming, um, that upcoming move to Connect. On the 16th, we will be hosting a MyTel roadmap discussion. And on the 30th, we will have a webinar on using conversation analytics to gather insights and improve remote working to make sure that you're getting the most efficiency out of your business while you have people working remote. A little bit about Inflow Communications as well here. Um, we do have a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. What that means is that voice is what we do. We don't branch into other, other uh, segments such as networking. We do truly focus on voice. And as a result of that, anytime you call in or send in a ticket for um, information or to get an issue resolved, you will be working with somebody who's well-versed in your platform who will be able to assist you. We are a MyTel Platinum partner, as well as partnered with Ring Central and Genesis Peer Club. And we do have offices and employees in 10 states and currently um, currently are supporting over 180,000 endpoints and eight, over 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. And we are maniacal about the customer, the customer experience. We want to make sure that you get all the information that you could ever need and then some to make sure that your voice environment is working exactly the way that your business needs. Here's a small snippet of some of the customers that we support. And as always, if you have any questions, you can use the question box in, Go to, in your GoToWebinar application to send those questions through, and I will get those answered for you. If there's anything that I cannot directly answer, we'll make sure to follow up with you as well. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Um, this webinar is designed to show you how the event filters work in the MyTel system. It is going to be fairly quick, as there's not a whole lot to it, but this is just going to show you how to set these up um, and how to get this set up in the most efficient manner, and also make sure you're not going to flood yourself with notifications that you aren't necessarily going to need. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and pop open a server. You'll note that the server that I'm on is already set up um, for the event filters here. And if you are using Connect, um, you'll note that this is under the maintenance category. Um, under maintenance and then event filters. You can also use the search box up here just to search for event filters, which will get you to where you need to go. The event filters in Shortel 14.2 under maintenance work exactly the same way. So this does apply to 14 as well if you were on the older platform. What event filters are used for is this is used to set up notifications via email for events that occur within the system. So this is a great way to be proactively alerted if you do have an issue in the system. Um, and you can be as broad or as specific with this as you really want to be. Um, up at the top, if there were any event filters in play already, you would see these in the, top, in the top pane where it says there's no data to display. This server doesn't have any currently configured. And then down at the bottom is where we would actually configure a new event notification. And you'll notice there's a number of different settings that you can use to achieve this result. Um, starting, starting with the server, you can actually look at any server reporting a particular issue or specific ones. Um, this can come in handy if you have a segmented network team or IT team that would be looking um, at stuff for their specific branches. Maybe you have multiple sites um, and at those sites you do have dedicated IT. It might make sense to set up event filters per site, which you could do using the server, the server section there. Otherwise, you can just report against all servers that could be reporting problems, which would be a good way to make sure that you're getting all the alerts that you need. You can also specify the sources that are that these um, these events are coming from, and this is where things can get a little a little bit more granular. Um, currently, as designed here, you would note that it is looking at all services and it's looking at any source, so any Connect service source. Um, this would mean that anytime there's an event notification on any of the Shortel services, it would actually send an email to um, 
the destination. You could see where this could definitely come in um, a bit jumbled, especially with the vast amount of informational messages that are um, generated by the system in the event viewer itself. You probably don't want to be looking at everything, which is where this comes into play. You'll notice that you can also look at other services as well. You can actually use the system to send emails based on other services that are built into the system. So if you're using some some other applications, you certainly could do that. We're not going to get into that too much today, but that that option does exist. Um, and you can look at other sources if you have a different source to specify, which would be the service name that you would want to look at. But the easiest way to do this would be to actually use an event ID. Um, the event ID will allow you to look at specific events in the MyTel system and allow you to see those events um, as they come through. And we have a few that we actually like to monitor as well um, that will allow you to um, have good control over your system, understand if there's an issue going on and allow you to take steps um, for those events. So we're gonna cover four different events today that we like to monitor on our, on our own. Um, and it, there are other event codes that you can look at as well. Um, just depends on what you want to do with your organization. So to go through those real quick, I'm gonna set up a quick event ID that we typically use here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the event ID radio button. I'm gonna type in 1319. The event ID corresponds to the event ID number that gets uh, generated in Windows when these events occur. This particular event, which would be a good one to write down if this is something you're interested in, is generated when somebody calls 911. If somebody calls emergency services, the server will generate an event 1319, noting the user that called 911 um, from, from the extension and the site that they are located at. So this can be used to send emails to um, either your IT team or if you have a safety team, um, you could set this up so that um, those emails will go out as soon as that call is made. So that way, while the call is in process, you know that somebody called 911 and you can be alerted at a business level. So this is a this is definitely an important one. Um, now you'll note here under there, um, you do have a type as well. Um, so you can set it to all, um, which would be any event, error, warning, or information. If you're gonna do an event ID, you can keep that at all. If you're gonna look at all um, informational events for like a specific service or just the short tail services in general, you might wanna set that to error or warning. And that will cut down on the messages that you do get um, when, you, when you do set that up. Um, and then to complete this particular event filter, before we go into a couple more that we like to look at as well, that will save you some time and allow you to proactively um, help out your system, we do need to set up an email address. Now the email address does have to be a singular email address. So in this particular case, I could set it, send it to myself if I wanted to, if I wanted to be the only person that gets these. The easiest way to do this would be to set up a distribution email. Um, so if we had something like IT department, that was a group in our exchange or other email, um, email setup that would allow multiple people to get this email this would be a great way to alert multiple people. Or maybe in this particular case, because this is a 911 filter, maybe we do safety, safety at implocom.com. And if I save this, oh, took the uh, services there. So actually we want to keep that and now we'll save it. So you'll see here now we have a, a shoreware source with a category of any, but a event ID of 1319, which means it's only looking for that event ID. And when that, when that event occurs, it's going to send an email to safety at implocom.com. And that email is going to contain the verbiage of the event itself, which in this particular case would be the user called 911 at this time from this phone at this site. So you would have all of that information there. So this is gonna be how this will look in the event filters. Now do note that the event ID does not tell you exactly what it is. It just notes that it's looking for that particular event ID. Um, so this is why you wanna get acquainted with the event numbers and why we look for a few specific ones. So this one would be for, for 911. Um, there are three others that we recommend. Um, the others would be, just to make a new one, just so you can see what this would look like. Um, the others would be 1342. This one, if you're using any PRIs in your system, so if you have PRIs as your general source of dial tone, 1342 is going to trigger 
if you have a D channel issue, so if that control channel on that PRI goes down and you are not able to make or receive calls, that does generate an alert on the system as well. So this will allow you to proactively say, okay, we're having an issue with this, with this PRI going up and down, or this PRI has gone down and has not come back up. Um, and this would be a good time to either call Inflow or potentially call our carrier to see what might be going on. So this is a great one to have if you're using a PRI for your for your uh, system, so that you can you can actually maintain and proactively monitor that and catch it sooner rather than later. Because the way that these things usually work is calls may go down and you may not actually have anybody tell you for 15 or 20 minutes. So this will let you get on top of things here. So punch in this one. So that 1342 here which you'll see in here now as well, is used for that D channel. And then the other two we use on our side is for um, fan speeds in the short tail switches themselves to make sure that those fans are not failing. And those are gonna be events 167. So it would be the same as this, um, the exact same setup. You could set this to whatever email you need. Um, and we would just change the event ID for, to 166 and save a new one or save it as 167. Um, and what those correspond to is 166 tells you if a fan is starting to move very slow in one of the short tail uh, switches. So you can be ahead of that. And then 167 will tell you if a fan has stopped completely. Now the good news is with these switches and the way that they're designed, you don't need to you don't need to um, rush to get that switch out of the system if you're in a proper ventilated server room environment, because those switches are designed to work for a good period of time even without a fan. However, this is a good reason to get a switch replaced, as you can't actually replace the fan internally without voiding the warranty. So this would be a good reason to send us an email or give us a call and say, hey, we've got a switch that um, has a failing fan. We need to get this replaced. And that is a valid need for replacement with Mitel. Um, so this is a good way to keep it, keep track of that, especially if you're on older switches, like the older SG units, or if you're still using those full width switches, like the 40 slash eights or the 120 slash 24s, those, those units, if their fan is, all, is not already starting to fail, probably going to happen pretty soon because of the way that those bearings work and how old those switches are now. Um, so this is a good way to keep track of that. And that's really all there is to event filters. Um, all that you need to do is set up the category that you want to look at. You can look at everything or something as specific as the event IDs that I've listed. Um, set up the email um, address that you want to look at. Um, and then whenever that event actually happens, the system will automate an email and send that out immediately so that you know. So this is a good way to keep track of your system. Now, a couple things that I would want to touch on for that, um, because I know, I know this may come up in the questions as well. If you want to look at switch connectivity, specific TMS connectivity, you can do that. The event number for that is 233. I would recommend, especially if you're in a larger environment, not to look for every event 233. Um, the reason for that is you're potentially, especially if you're in a large environment with hundreds of switches, you will get flooded with emails for that. Because whenever a, even briefly to another switch, even if it doesn't impact your production environment, you're gonna get an email for that. And so you may potentially end up with hundreds of emails that don't actually matter. Um, whereas um, looking at the connectivity grid, if there is an actual issue, is going to give you a much quicker um, and better knowledge as to what the issue may be. But that is definitely, definitely possible if you do wanna do that. Other events, um, other specific events can, can be put in here as well. Um, there are thousands of events, as you might imagine. So in order to get you the proper information as to the event that you're looking for, we would need to know what you're looking to report against. And then we can help you help you and provide the information required to get that event filter set up. So with that in mind, that is everything on event filters. Um, like I noted, this was gonna be a pretty short one because there's not a whole lot to them. Um, at this point, um, if we do have any questions, we can go ahead and take a look at those here. And let me go and see if we have any questions right now. No questions at the moment, so I'll give it a couple minutes here just to see if anything pops up. All 
All right. Up oh, there is one. Let's see here. Is there a way to check TMS without getting flooded by emails? With the event filters, not really, um, because the event filters are only going to are only going to come into play when an event is propagated. So if you are in a in a network environment, 50 or 60 sites, you have 100 150 switches, and you're spread out across the globe. There's a significant chance, even with a rock solid network, that you may have from time to time a switch in maybe in Europe not being able to talk to like one site in the U.S. briefly. That's going to pop an alert. And then it may be resolved by the time you even see it. So that would be something that you'd need to. Activity. The best way to do it is using the connectivity. Looking at um, looking at um, the MyTel Connect platform. Will there be a transcript at the end of this? This video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and look for Inflow Communications, you will see a whole host of videos, including this one, as well as full-on administrator trainings and other topics that we have covered. Is there a way to use a filter to see if the switch has gone down? So that would be the TMS communication, um, because that's how the, how the system knows. The TMS is the heartbeat of the system. So when TMS stops reporting for a specific switch, that's when that event 233 is thrown. Any other questions? All right, looks like we're good there. So just for your guys' knowledge as well, um, if you do have any additional questions after this that come up after the fact, um, not a problem. Or if you just need any general information, you can connect with our support in a variety of ways. So this is our current customer resources for connecting with Inflow. You can send us an email at support at inflowcommunications.com. That will send an email um, into our support ticketing system. They are responded at in the order that they are received. Um, so um, we should be getting back to you fairly quickly with those as well. Um, but for urgent matters, you will definitely want to call. Um, support portal as well will let you look at all of the tickets you have in the system with Inflow. You can find that at support.inflowcommunications.com. You can log in, view the status of all of all your existing tickets, um, take a take a look and actually respond to each of those tickets. And if you're the, the main contact for your system, we can even set it up so that you are able to see all the tickets that anybody in your organization has created. Um, with this, if you have not used that tool before, you'll want to give us a call or send us an email first so we can set you up. Um, because it does require some setup on our side in order to make this operate. And then finally, if you have an urgent issue or if you just want to talk to somebody on the phone, you can give us a call at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. We do have a three ring answer policy, so you will not be on the phone for 10 to 15 minutes waiting for an engineer. And because voice is what we do, as soon as you get on the phone, you're going to be on the phone directly with a voice engineer that will be capable of answering your questions and supporting your system. And finally, if you want any more information on inflow support packages and what we can do to better um, our business relationship with you and make sure that you have the support you need, you can reach us at sales at inflowcommunications.com or you can also give us a call at 844-446-3569. So again, um, on behalf of Inflow Communications, thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Um, we do hope to see you in the future on our other webinars. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.